Well, welcome back. That wasn't five minutes. It was only about two. Uh, now we're going to talk about reflector antennas, antennas that mechanically scan an azimuth or an elevation to move the, uh, the radar beam, the antenna, from one position to another. We're going to talk about basic antenna, reflector antenna characteristics and geometry, and the different factors spill over the beam and blockage that come into play um, that can give you losses in the antenna its performance. We're going to talk about in a lot more detail aperture illumination. And then we're going to look at different reflector feeds and geometries, not just the simple parabolic geometry that we uh, showed you before. Okay, here's the, really it's the geometry of a parabolic antenna. And from uh, basic geometry, uh, you know that if, if you have a parabolic surface, uh, there's a point on the axis where if you send rays all into this, this parabolic surface, this, the axis of symmetry of the, of the parabola, they all will bounce off and come back parallel. So what we'd like to do to make a parallel wave front point in one direction, significantly ob obviously to start off in the near field, what we want to do is have a feed uh, at the focus of the parabola. And in this case, for the, what we're talking about in this example in these drawings, the aperture diameter is 5 meters, and that's a wavelength of 1 meter. And the, 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 uh, this distance D is the distance, the size of the antenna. And now if we calculate the antenna gain in the far field, this is what it looks like. We have, uh, at, I'm just marking this point, the isotropic side lobe level right here. And then we have the level to the first side lobe. And the isotropic side lobe level is 6 dB. And the gain is 24 dB. And the side lobe level is 18 dB. And that's for a parabola. And the half power beam width is 12 dB. That's half power right there. And you notice that the side lobes are rather high. They go down to zero. And it's symmetric. And so you've got pretty good directivity, but um, you don't have the kind of side lobe response you might want with a side lobe level of 18 dB. You might want a lot more. Okay, but I'm just right now going to talk about general characteristics of the antennas. Here again is that parabolic reflector antenna uh, diagram. And if we plot for a generalized antenna gain, to the relative gain with making the, the peak of the main lobe zero, and we, we plot relative gain as a function of the angle off the beam axis, we see that there are a lot of different places where we have terms which we describe the mass. The big bump here we call the main lobe. That's at zero degrees right on the main beam, the main lobe. And then this is called a vestigial lobe or a shoulder where there isn't a, a minimum where the, it just falls off with a different slope. It doesn't go to a minima and then go back up. Here we see the peak of the first side lobe and second and third. And, the, and here when, when energy from the feed goes up, that's fine there, when energy of the feed goes up and, and, and goes past the reflector, you're going to get spill, what is known as spillover radiation. 
from diffraction at this point. And then, believe it or not, behind the antenna, you'll see some backlobe radiation. So they are from zero, and they'd be symmetric, of course, in most cases from zero to minus 180 degrees. So the, what, what this is to point out is that the reflected design involves trading off between we want to maximize the dish illumination, we want to minimize the energy that goes in, limits spillover and blockage from the feed and its support structure. And so the feed antenna choice is critical. And that's what we're going to be talking about for a while, that critical design. Because we want as much of this radiation to be up in the main lobe. We want the side lobes to be down as low as possible. And we want to manage that in an optimum way. Okay. Now this is to point out the effect of aperture size on the gain of the antenna. And here's our equation. Uh, 4 pi times the effective area over lambda squared is the gain. And this is a rule of thumb in best case, 4 pi a over lambda squared. And this shows you how the gain goes with the, the diameter of the antenna. And I've plotted three different cases going from a longer wavelength of 100 centimeters, 30 centimeters, and 10 centimeters. As the wavelength decreases, the gain goes up. And as the aperture diameter increases, the gain goes up. Okay? Now let's look at how the half power beam width changes with, uh, as a function of aperture diameter as we again change the wavelength. And here we're going to start off with wavelengths of 10 centimeters and then 30 and then 100 centimeters. So our beam width, the half power beam width gets greater and greater and greater as we increase the wavelength and, but not as fast as when we increase the diameter. Um, it, it, it goes as this quantity. Okay, but, you know, beam width is inversely proportional to the diameter and proportional to the wavelength. So the beam width decreases as the aperture becomes electrically larger and the diameter larger uh, the diameter is a larger number of wavelengths is another is another way of saying the beam width is it, the, the antenna is electrically larger. Now there are different ways to get energy out to that source. We can run a waveguide. We can run a waveguide out to this little radiator and have it'll radiate in all directions, but we've got a little reflector back here that will reflect energy back, and all that energy will then come back to the par para parabola and then be irradiated out. Or we can have a waveguide with a little curve in it and a loop backwards and have the feed again at the focus of the par parabola in all directions and then go out. Or we can to reduce the blockage, we can have, or in, increase the blockage, actually. Just run a waveguide, put a right-hand turn in it, another right, left-hand turn, and then have it. So that what you're seeing here are three different types of feed structures that will have three different degrees of blockage. And the point source uh, is evolves to a plane wave in the far field, I want to note. And the feed can be a dipole or open-ended waveguide. Here it's a dipole or an open-ended waveguide in these two cases. And the feed structure reduces the antenna efficiency, but the whole question is how much. We also can, by shaping the beam, not just a parabola, but having different feed structures, 
we can have a pencil beam, which I've been showing you. This is a parabola antenna with some struts holding a waveguide out in place. That gives you a pencil beam. You can have a stacked set of pencil beams on this antenna, which we're going to see later blown up. This is a set of feeds offset from the focus. So we'll have a, a set of stacked beams, pencil beams, that will be going at different elevation angles. We can have a fan beam if we have a, a relatively small aperture in horizontally and a wide aperture vertically. It, it, this particular antenna will give you a, a, a fan beam which is very narrow in elevation, this particular picture. It, 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 uh, it's the op the, 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 this picture is the opposite for this antenna. For this antenna with the very wide aperture, you get a narrow vertical beam width. And with the, with the smaller width of the aperture in azimuth, you'll get a very big um, antenna. So what you need to notice is to just rotate this 90 degrees, and you'll have an accurate uh, picture, visualization of the, the beam. And you can also have a shaped beam that is in this uh, air, air uh, this surveillance radar of the FAA, where they have an array that's down near the focal point, and they illuminate different sets of elements in the array to make a, sh a set of seven or eight shaped beams. so that they can very carefully control vertical side lobes and the shape of the beam in its vertical direction and its horizontal direction. And it's a, it, we'll look at that antenna in detail later. Okay. Now to give you an example of reflect a comparison, uh, here's the Altair antenna, the, the, the antenna for the Altair radar at Kwajalein. And, and, and it's, you know, over 120 feet in diameter, 45.7 meters. And, uh, and it, 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 it operates and in what it, it, it operates at both UHF and VHF, but I'll just explain this. This is to show you the different electrical diameter size. At VHF, it's 162 megahertz frequency transmission. The wavelength's 1.85 meters, and the electrical size is 25 times lambda. Has a gain of 34 dB and a beam width of 2.8 degrees, and it's 45.7 meters. If you scale it by a third, you're down one third in size. This is a millimeter waves wavelength radar. The operating frequency is 35 gigahertz which is 8.6, well, it, it's 8.6 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, millimeters. And its electrical size is almost 1,600 lambda, and it has 70 dB of gain with an incredibly small uh, 0.00076 degrees. So the electrical size is huge. That's what's different, even though the physical size isn't all that different. And it's the wavelength which carries the day. This is 1.85 meters as opposed to uh, 8.6 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Now to talk in detail about spillover and blockage. Now this is a picture um, and just to want to make the first uh, two points in this, it's even when the reflector is exactly at the focus of the, of the parabolic reflector, some of the energy at the edge will not impinge upon the reflector. It's going to spill over. 
That's called the spillover region, and here's the diffraction region. The energy will diffract around. And here's, that, here's the beam width of the antenna main lobe, and that energy will go out and out, and the energy up here will just spill over. That's what that's called, beam spillover. And we can taper the effect, the feed illumination, as we illuminate the feed. Taper the illumination across this feed can mitigate the effect. Okay, and notice too we've got some energy goes out into the side lobes, and that would be f spill over also. The name of the game here is always tra is trade off in the design of antennas. You want it perfect, you can't have your way, so you have a set of curves, and you got to pick the pick the how you want to maximize the performance of the antenna. You've got your beam spill over. You've got your tapering of your aperture illumination, which is going to affect your gain. And gain means you're going to have loss in the in the on the main beam at the tip, and you've got and feed feed blockage. So you've got to worry about all of those. Now here's an example of an antenna which has feed blockage. There are three struts that come out. And uh, beside one of the struts is a waveguide that makes a U-turn back to the feed, which is at the focus of the parabola. And the effect of the blockage can be approximated by taking the antenna pattern of the undisturbed aperture without the blockage and subtracting the an antenna pattern produced by the shadow of the obstacle. And here we see the pattern with no blockage, it's got higher gain, and it's got, you know, nice low side lobes. And here is the, in, in uh, the pattern with the blockage, is the dark pattern. And this dotted line here is the blockage pattern. So what you do, in fact, is you get you do, you don't get the ideal low side lobes, and you lose a little bit in gain. But you but you trade it, but you're able to mount your feed. And th this is a significant design issue: uh, the feed and its supports, because uh, the masts uh, on board a ship. And they're going to be real, real issues. And here's an example of the Tradex antenna. Now, uh, and the feed and its supports, as I mentioned before, this pr procedure of, of doing the um, subtracting off the blockage pattern is possible because of the linearity of the Fourier transform that relates the antenna aperture illumination and the radiation pattern. So that's, that's the reason why we can do this subtraction quite easily. And I'm just showing you this second, this next, this view graph as opposed to the last one with another example of blockage. But here are some real doozies. Excuse me, let me, let me sit up straight here. Uh, here we have on the USS Abraham Lincoln, an aircraft carrier, and here's the SPS 49 search radar, and it's mounted, and Here's the mast of the aircraft carrier with all this stuff on it. So you've got real blockage out there. Here's some SPG-51 uh, fire control radars, and they've got blockage similar to before. Uh, here's uh, a NASA tracking radar with what's known as a Cassegrain feed. We're going to have a, two or three view graphs on what that means, you know, that type of uh, feed. And that's got blockage. And here's the SPS-48, which rotates on the USS Theodore Roosevelt, another carrier. And it rotates mechanically. And it's certainly got the mast in its way. So blockage with the antennas is a significant problem you have to deal with.